This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this lecture is the first of a series of lectures um, going through paper F2. And so in a minute, I'll start talking about it through chapter one. Uh, because it's the first lecture, though, do make sure that you have downloaded the free lecture notes. Because they are lecture notes. It's those notes I'm using as a basis for lectures. And if you have downloaded the notes, I mean, there's a contents page with 28 chapters to get through. Uh, also, if you um, thumb through, I think it's the third page, you'll find uh, there's a formula sheet. Uh, that's, those are the formula you get given in the exam. Uh, and I'll explain what they are as and when we come to them in the, in the relevant chapters. Uh, you'll also find two pages of what we call discount tables. Uh, one's headed up present value table, the other's headed up annuity table. Uh, some of you may have seen those before at uh, school or at university. But again, you get given those in the exam and I'll explain what they are and how we use them uh, when we get come to the relevant chapter. However, uh, let's carry on with uh, chapter one. And um, the first three chapters are all fairly short and don't involve any um, calculations. Later we've got a lot of calculations to come to. So this won't be a long lecture, but you do get asked what I call written questions. It isn't all calculations in the exam. And when I say written, it's not that you're writing an essay. It's um, things like uh, which of the following statements are true. Um, and again, no calculations involved. But having said that, it is important. Uh, and chapter one, accounting for management, is very much an introductory uh, chapter explaining basically what the management accountants are doing. And the job of the management accountant is to help management run the business, to help them improve the business. Management, for instance, have to make lots of decisions. They have to decide uh, what selling price to charge for whatever we're producing. Well, it's up to the management accountant to give them the information they need to help them make those decisions. Uh, paragraph two mentions data and information. Now, I said management need information. Uh, for example, if we're a country which uh, sells in various countries, they might want to know what percentage of our sales are in the UK, what percentage of our sales are in France, and so on. Well, that's information they need. Now, they don't want a long list of each individual sale, but clearly, each individual sale will be recorded somewhere. That's data. But I say again, it's no use giving management a list of, you know, 10,000 sales and expecting them to sort it all out. It's the management accountant's job to turn those individual items, the data, into information, into reports, charts, whatever. So uh, that's the distinction between the two. In my little example, a record of each individual sale is the data. Turning that into a report or a graph or a chart, simply showing in total what we were selling to the UK, to France, etc. That's information. Uh, paragraph three, what makes good information? You'll see there's what we call a mnemonic, the bold letters, accurate, which I won't put the writing down here, but just running down them. Good information obviously must be accurate, must be correct. It must be complete. We don't give them half a story, we need all the relevant information. It must be cost effective. What I mean there is it is going to cost money to prepare these reports whether it's computer time, whether it's management accountants time, whatever. And it's worth spending the money if it helps them make better decisions which earn them more money. But there's clearly a limit. We want the cost of doing it to be less than the benefits we get. Um, obviously it needs to be understandable. Management aren't all accountants. We need to give them information in a way they understand. It must be relevant to the decision they're making. Accessible, you know, how, uh, as I've written there, um, are we going to print out the reports? Are we going to send them electronically? That's all in there. Uh, timely, 
uh, reports need to be up to date and they need to be given them on time if they're making a big decision next week and they need some information obviously we've got to give them the, the relevant reports before they make the decision um, it must be easy to use uh, over the page paragraph four says the main managerial processes uh, this really is effectively a summary of the uh, syllabus we've got to go through that the various jobs involved for the management accountant. Uh, the first one there is costing, which is terribly important, that if we're a company producing goods, suppose we make desks, then we need to work out how much each desk is costing to make. You know, if only for fixing the selling price, if a desk's costing $20 to make, obviously we want to uh, sell it at a price higher than 20 and so uh, a desperately important area and a big bit of the syllabus, as we go through later chapters, you'll see there are various different approaches, methods we can use for costing. Uh, it depends very much on what it is we're producing or what service we're giving. Uh, the next one, planning. Uh, most of you, I'm sure, would have heard of uh, budgets which is a chapter we'll come to later, but the budget are plans. We need to make plans for next year. How many um, uh, desks, if we're producing desks, how many desks do we think we can sell next year? Therefore, let's plan how many desks we're going to produce. Let's plan uh, how much wood we're going to need, how much labour we're going to need. But again, it's the job of the management accountant. Now the third one, decision making. Um, the example I've given there is the one I referred to earlier. Um, decide on what selling price to charge for a product. All right, it may be management who decides, but it's the management accountant who will provide the information and advise them on what sort of price they should charge. Uh, control. Another big area we'll come to later, something called variances, uh, where, I've written there, check month, it's not a rule, but very commonly, check month by month how things are going. You know, I may have budgeted on spending $10,000 a month on wages. Well, let's check each month. Did we spend 10000 Maybe we spent more, and if we spent more than we were supposed to, then, of course, we need to investigate and find out why did we spend too much? Uh, is there a problem? Is there something we can sort out? Uh, and finally, the last bit of the syllabus that we're going to go through, performance uh, evaluation. Uh, we want to help improve the business, make the business more profitable. But we need to decide how are we going to measure how well we're doing. Uh, both individual managers, are they doing a good job, a bad job? We need to think about how we'll me measure that. Or divisions, departments of the business. Again, measure uh, and see how well or how badly they're doing. Uh, I mentioned earlier planning and the need for information to make decisions. Paragraph five has the different levels. First of all, you'll see what we call strategic planning. Uh, and that's long-term planning. I mean, it's silly I'm just reading word by word to you, but those are as good as examples of any. Um, we're thinking of opening new offices. Are we thinking of launching new products? Well, these are long-term decisions, long-term plans, uh, typically five to ten years. Once we've done that, once we've decided, oh, we're going to open a new office in a certain uh, city, or we're going to launch this new product, then we can start making more detailed short-term plans. And that's tactical planning. Uh, 
uh, medium term or detailed plans. Um, this is where the budgets for next year fit in. Most companies do budgets for the next year, plans for next year. Well, that's tactical planning. But we do it in order. You see that strategic planning, we've decided we're going to produce a new product. Having made the decision, now we can do more detailed plans as to what's involved over the next year. What resources will we need? What staff will we need? What materials will we need? And so on. Uh, having done that, then, of course, we need day-by-day -day decisions, which is operational planning. Um, we've done our budgets for next year, so we know how many um, units we're planning to produce in January and February and so on. But day by day, we've got to make decisions like which supplier to choose for a purchase or how many hours of work do we need tomorrow. These are very short term, day by day decisions. And the managers at each of those levels need information to help them do that planning. At the strategic level, they're going to need a lot of external information. You know, if you're thinking of opening a new office somewhere, a new factory, uh, we need to know what other similar businesses are operating there. What's the competition going to be like? So we need a lot of external information outside of the company. Whereas, at the operational level, the day-by-day -day running of the business, that's very much internal information. Information generated within the business, how many we're producing, how many hours of labour do we need, and so on. All right, finally for this chapter, I'm sorry I'm going on a bit, it gets more fun later when we come to the numbers chapters. Now, but finally, you'll see a comparison with management of Management accounting with financial accounting. And there's a table there which you can, if I can spell, you can fill in with me. Uh, because they are two separate jobs, even though in some businesses the same person will do both, they're two separate areas here. Financial accounting is producing what we call the statutory accounts, producing a, a balance sheet and a profit statement because the law requires it. Um, financial accounting, it's required by law Businesses have to keep financial records, they have to produce financial statements once a year Management accounting, no, it's not required by law. It's there to help management. Uh, what else? Um, the timing. Well, financial accounts, again, I think you've all heard of whether you've done paper F3 or not, you should have heard of the balance sheet, the statement of financial position, and the statement of profit and loss. Um, not only is it required by law, but it has to be at least once a year. I know some companies might do it more often, but they have to produce a set of financial statements once a year. Management, no laws involved here, they do it whenever they want. And in fact, they tend to usually do profit statements monthly. It's not good waiting till the end of the year and finding out it's been a dreadful year when it's too late to do anything. The management accountant, it's not a rule again, but normally they'll produce these profit statements every month. And so if they see there's something going wrong in January, well, hopefully there's still time to put things right by February, you know, the rest of the year. Um, who do they report to? Well, financial accounts, although lots of people might use the accounts, the tax people will look at them, 
uh, the bank might look at them and so on. Uh, legally, they're reporting to the shareholders. And it's they're reporting externally. So, you know, a limited company, anybody can look at their financial statements. Shareholders get sent them. Uh, again, the tax people, lots of people can look at them. They're reporting ex outside the company. Uh, as far as um, management accounts are concerned, they're reporting only to management. It's internal. Nobody else can look at um, the, these monthly profit statements. It's purely internal, it's purely for management. Uh, the format, the layout of the statements. Well, again, financial accounts, it's required by law. Uh, and it doesn't really matter for paper F2, but certainly if you've done F3 or you may have heard of accounting standards. There are rules that must be followed um, when preparing the financial profit statements. Management accounting, though, I keep saying there are no laws, there are no rules. It's whatever format we find useful. It's most useful. And again, you'll have to be patient till we come to the numbers chapters, but you will find in a later chapter um, that management accounts, their profit statements often do look a little bit different than the financial accounting ones. But there we are, I mean, uh, just a summary. But so important, they are two separate areas. In paragraph two, Apart from what I've just said, we're not the slightest bit interested in financial accounts. I don't care what the law says, uh, what accounting standards say. But management accounting, we do whatever's most useful to help management improve the business. All right, so I hope that made sense. It should be a nice, easy chapter, but go back and uh, do read it. Because although you won't get many questions in this chapter in the exam, certainly one or two, and a lot of it is just definitions, data, information, the levels of planning and so on. Jolly good.